Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. Would you bow here for a word of prayer? Amen. Almighty God, we this morning deem this one wonderful privilege. I honor God to come away from the cares, from the hustle, the bustle of the world, God, from our situations and our problems. Lord, from our burdens, God, even pushes in our side the sickness that plagues our bodies. And God, uh, just with one objective, that is to come to magnify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God. We want to invite you this morning, Father, to come and have your own way. Lord, realizing, God, we are the clay, God. And you, God, are the potter. And this morning, Lord, we realize and know that we've got to go on to the potter's wheel this morning. Lord, to be remolded, that we can become images of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in this dark, dying world, oh God, people don't know which way to go. They're running from the north, the south, the west. They don't know what to do anymore, God. Everything is out of the hands of God of man but this morning god we know that god is in control of everything god is in control of every situation god is in control of every problem every burden no matter what it is god you are the still on the throne this morning god and father we are inviting you to come and have your own way this morning god may you come and touch your people this once more father May the power of the Holy Spirit sweep into the lives of men, women, and children. Father, may there be a manifestation of the seed of the word, O God. Come and bless your people, God. As we've been so long, Father, your prophet prayed one time and he said, God, we've been trained so long. May this morning we take our ranks, God. Father, we are prepared for the battle that lays ahead, O God. May you come and bless each and every soul this morning, myself. Lord, may you take me out of the way. I don't know which way to go. I've written uh, God, amen, quotes down and a thought down. But Lord, uh, uh, I cannot even put it together, God. But we are praying this morning, as your prophet says, every man can open a Bible, but it takes the Holy Spirit to reveal the contents of it, God. So may you come down this morning and come and uh, open the contents of your word, amen, to us that we may go out of here and say, To God be the glory. We give the glory to Jesus Christ, O God. May you come and bless us now. Bless the reading of the word. Bless everything that may transpire this morning, God. As we commit all things back to you this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. have your Bibles, uh, I've got two uh, scriptures here. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Mm. Oh, let's read from uh, verse 1 up to verse uh, 3. And the book of Acts 17, verse 28. Amen. If you have it, Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Amen. Just up to there. Then uh, the book of uh, Acts chapter 17, reading. Or reading from verse 24. Amen. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of the habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of our own poets have said, we are also his offspring. Amen. May God 
place the reading of the word. You may be seated. Amen. I greet you in the lovely name of Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. I'm thankful to be once again in the house of God. And I believe that every one of us are here, are glad to be here today. That we can come away from the cares and the hustle, the bustle of the world. And we can come and magnify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, while we are upon the face of the earth, while we have bodies, while we are still, I would say, young. Amen. To take an opportunity to magnify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank uh, uh, the, the believers for the testimonies of Sister Hope. She called the inspiration of uh, faith. Amen. I believe we are living in a time we are having, uh, God has given us a message of faith. Amen. Amen. To restore our hearts back to the original faith. Yes. Amen. Uh, and our young sisters here that sang that beautiful song, we truly appreciate them. And this morning, uh, as we go straight to the word, I want to take a title, The Spoken Word Attributes of God. Now God has got attributes of His spoken word upon the face of the earth. Amen. In this day and age when the world is in a chaotic condition. Amen. I want to take the inspiration here, the offspring of God. Amen. The prophet says in rising of the sun. Amen. I mean, uh, Brother Branham says in one place, if you uh, read the Bible and you don't see Christ in every verse in the Bible, then you've got to go back to the Bible. Amen. And read it over. The prophet says here, Amen. In rising of the sun, he is the one that opened those seals. He is those seals. For the whole word of God is Christ, and Christ is the seals that has opened. What is the opening of the seals then? Revealing Christ. So Brother Bram came with a message of the hour to reveal Christ. He did not come to reveal himself. He did not come to re, uh, start an organization or university. He came with one objective, that is to reveal Christ in a word. And the prophet says, any fivefold minister will point the people to Christ. Amen. You get so many ministers today to point the people to themselves. My ministry, my great anointing, my gift. No, we are here for one purpose. That is to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I can tell you this morning, we are not feeding of a man. We are feeding a man and his word will fail. But we are feeding of the living word of the Son of Man, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. Now, if you look at the, uh, the, uh, uh, the earth that we are standing in today, Amen, it is a very spoken word of God. Now tell me, my brother, sister, where did God get the material from? Where did God pick up the material and create the earth? The Bible says, or oh, Brother Brenham came and he said, God stood upon that invisible platform and he spoke the word and he raked out his hands. Amen. And the, amen. And the sun came into existence. The earth came into existence. Everything that came into existence, even this very desert that we are sitting on today, amen, it is a spoken word of God. But I want to ask you something. Where did God get the material, amen, to pull the pride? Amen. He took of his own self. He took his own nature to build a bride. And here we're standing today as a very, amen, a spoken word seed of Almighty God. Amen. The Bible says, amen, or rather, the prophet says, we live of dead substance. You know, when a human being lives, he can only live of dead substance. When we eat cow, the cow died. When we eat vegetable, the vegetable died. So if we have to live naturally, if we've got to live spiritually, then something had to die for us. And I'm so glad this morning that Christ died so we could live spiritually. And we can live eternally with Jesus Christ. Amen. Now God has got all attributes. Can we go back a hundred million years ago and you can find that great, pure fountain of spirit. Amen. That covered all space and time. I'd like to say this, uh, you know those seven colors that floated among uh, or upon the, uh, upon the deep, amen, that floated in eternity, that was a very God of the Bible. It was Elohim, the self-existing one, and but he wanted an intimate attributes of being, amen, a creator, 
He had attributes of being a God, but there was nothing. There was nothing. He was self-existing. He was alone. He was a great Elohim that covered all space and time. But you know, he wanted to birth those uh, amen, attributes of his. So he spoke and he created angels. And angels came to worship him. They came to bless him. They came, came to magnify him. But you know something? They weren't lost. So that, that gift of the attribute of, of salvation could not be displayed. So we had to put man upon the face of the earth. He created man and man. He gave a man. Amen. He put the man upon the face of the earth to have his own ability to reason. To accept or to reject. But he knew that man would fail. In order for the man to fail. Amen. But he could not put man upon that. He had to put him on his own basis. Of his own decision. And what man done. By that he failed. He wanted to fend for himself. He wanted to look after himself. But he failed. And you go into the year 2018. And man is still trying to build themselves a religion. But it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Amen. The man comes and he says, no, I want to start a church. I want to do that. I want to do that. There is no church that can save a man. The Bible says there is one mediator between God and man. I am so glad. I'm so glad that somebody paid a price for all of us. There was no man that could do it. No body upon the face of the earth. It doesn't matter how rich he was, how popular he was, how creative he had. They were all failures to begin with. The Bible says in Psalm 51, man that has born a woman is of a few days and there's a law hanging over the human being. Amen. That is born in sin and shaped in iniquity. He came into the world speaking lies. He was with his back turned to God. There was no hope for a man. You go to the Garden of Eden one day when, uh, when, uh, when Cain killed his brother Abel. The Bible says he ran from the presence of God. And that is the trend of the human being today. To run from the presence of God. But I'm so good at I'm so happy this morning. The seed of God. Amen. The seed. The eternal germ of God has found us. We were one time in our little shop, beans, we in the gambling tents. There was nothing in us. We didn't want to serve God. We didn't want to hear anything about God. But God spoke to our hearts. And here I can stand today and say, with the grace of God has caught my life. You know, the human being will sit down and think that in a message, you are, we are nothing. We are not nothing. If we were nothing, why did God call us? Why did God choose us? Man by his own free will fell. But God projected himself that great attribute of being a savior, attribute of being a healer that was locked in that great fountain of life. It was sealed. It was sealed in God and he couldn't display it until he put man upon the face of the earth and man became lost. Man, because of their own decision, they were lost. But God projected the salvation to the human race. And here we can stand today and say, we are not better than other people. We are not more intelligent than other people. It was a grace of Almighty God that pulled us out of our condition. When man needed healing, God projected that healing power of his, that healing attribute. Something in the human to respond to that attribute that was projected. You know, the prophet says uh, there is a deep or there was a deep calling to the deep. He says, he speaks about that little boy that had the rubber of the, of the, of the pedal. He says there was carbon in there. When they checked up on it, they seen there was this carbon or... Or um, in, the, in, the, in the pedal. And when they examined him, they said there's a lack of carbon in that little boy. And the prophet said before there was a desire for something, there had to be something to quench that desire. Now come and tell you something. Before there was a church, before there was a desire to serve Jesus Christ, there had to be a desire in your heart to be able to serve him. 
That is why you are here this morning. That is why you are here to worship Him, because there is a desire in your heart to be able to magnify the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Before there was a fish on a fish, a fun on a fish's back, there had to be a water first for the fish to swim in, or he would not have any fun. Amen. Before there was a tree to grow in the earth, there had to be an earth first for it to grow in, or there would be no tree. If there is a hunger in your heart for more of God. You know, when a human being today, the believer today, I want more of God. I want to worship Him more. I want to be a more dedicated Christian. There's got to be something in your heart, amen, to, to respond to that great big calling of Almighty God. And you are the children of Almighty God that was in the mind of God. And when you were there, you already put a desire in you for you to be able to desire to serve God in this day. You had to be somewhere first before you came here. That's what the prophet said. Redemption is to bring back that that was already lost. You were lost, so there was something to save you. There was something to call you out of the world. And that something is in your heart in the year 2018. Amen. So when you come to church, it's not you. It is a desire in your heart to be able to worship Him, to be able to praise Him. Amen. You may be seated. The very means of your believing in healing, it shows that there's something back there making you believe there's a healing. I believe there's a healing for somebody here this morning. I don't care what sickness is upon you. If you know that God can heal you, you are here this morning to be healed. Amen. So, I, you know, I, I love this, man. You know that there's such a desire in our hearts. David says in one place, my heart thirsts after thee like the heart, like like heart panteth after the water brook. So my soul thirsts for thee, depending on how thirsty you are. If you are a little bit thirsty, you only get so much. But if you are very thirsty, you're going to get more. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Do you know that you were there before the foundation of the world? You were with God. You were with Michael when they fought against Lucifer. Amen. And you cast them out of heaven. You were there at that time already. Maybe you don't know it, but today, may you catch a revelation. You were there before the foundation of the world. Yes, you were there, brother. I was there. I was with Michael. You were with Michael. I want to read you this quote, question and answers on Genesis, paragraph 61. He says, when God created me, William Branham, I was before the foundation of the world. He made my being, he made my spirit. I wasn't conscious of anything as far as I know, but I was there. Jesus told the disciples that he knew them before the foundation of the world. And Paul said here that he chose us in him before the world began. Amen. So we were there before the foundation of the world. We don't know it, but there's some spiritual amnesia that's upon the face of the earth. And I can tell you this morning, it's because of these bodies that we don't realize. But there's something within your soul that knows that you come from God and you are going back to God. The prophet said, now there was some part of me, up, uh, Om and Nemo and the rest of you all, that was in Christ Jesus before the world ever began. So we are the very spoken word seed of Almighty God. 
When you look at me, you see my outer carcass. You see my body, but you don't know there's something in me that is speaking to you this morning, that you are the seed of God that proceeded from that great fountain. When the devil comes to you, you must tell the devil, you know, Satan, before you were, I was there. So I'm older than you. I'm bigger than you. I'm stronger than you. Don't let the devil keep kicking you around. He's your small guy. He's your lighty kid. No, I'm a child of God. I'm going to hold back my shoulders. I'm going to pull back my head. I am a child of God. Amen. The prophet says, and here's my analysis of that. I think that the people today that are possessed with the spirit or the spirit are part of these great, great angelic beings, spirits which are tainted off of God. Now where do you come from when you go to the, what that place, home affairs, they say you were born such, no, I was not born that day. I was before the home affairs. My name was written in heaven. I come from God. I come from the very back part of God's mind. Amen. You know, when you go to home affairs, they say you're born that day and the day you die, you go to home affairs and you say this person died and they read over your tombstone or your grave. You're like, so you are not that person. You are not there. That is only the jacket that you wore. And nothing, you are tired of that jacket. You take that jacket and you hang it in the, uh, amen, the history of human race. Here lies so and so. We are not there. When we die, there's another body waiting for you. A body that don't get sick. A body that don't stress. A body that don't have high blood pressure. Amen. The prophet says here, a part of these angelic beings, spirits which rotated off of God that never fell in the beginning. The reason why you can't fall today is because you never fell in the beginning. The devil could not lie to you because you are a child of God. You are very expression of almighty God. You are the same as God. You resist the devil's lie. The, the prophet says, and two-thirds of the earth is in sin, and more than that, which two-thirds of the angels was kicked out, and those demon spirits come into people and habitate their bodies. So when you see a human being with a spirit on them, then you know that was a spirit before the foundation of the world, but that spirit can't touch you because you were one of them that stood with the archangel Michael and had a fight against the devil. So I want to tell you today, draw your sword. You can destroy the devil again. You can put him out of your family. You can have, you can get him running again. Amen. The prophet says a demon there was once existed and they come into people and give them a nature. Is that why the prophet says, uh, amen, the, the nature of the soul or the nature of the soul, the spirit is the soul. And you have a, a, an anointing upon your soul. But I'm so glad that the people that's going to get the Holy Ghost. I can see a promise of the Holy Ghost hanging over you. Because the Bible says so and Jesus Christ came and he vindicated that. And those demons, they come into the people. And the prophet says, out of Mary, Magdalene cast seven demons. So we come to church with our demons and I know that God is going to deliver us. He's going to set us free. He's going to make us love one another. He's going to make us appreciate one another. He's going to put love where that thing was. He's going to put something that we can hold on to the promise of Almighty God. 
That is a God that we serve in the year 2018. A God that can do all things. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He knows everything. He knows what you've done this morning. Amen. You know what? It's because of this message of life that God gave us that we can stand and know what God has said. We are not in darkness. God has sent us a message. He sent us a message of life. He sent us a message of that, uh, that we can, uh, the devil can be exposed. He says here the beginning and the ending of uh, the Gentile dispensation. Before the foundation of the world, before I laid it, when the sons of God sang together and the morning stars shouted for joy. Amen. The morning stars shouted for joy. Them shining ones shouting for joy when they seen that someday they were tabernacled here on the earth. So you are a shining one this morning and you are here tabernacled on the face of the earth. And the king Melchizedek would come in the righteousness of God and give his life to redeem us to God back again and now shining stars forever and ever. When you go out over the evening and you look at the star shining and you know that one day you will outshine that star. You will be one of the shining ones. You will be one of the, sh the sons of God. You will be a daughter of God upon the face of the earth again. God did not uh, create this earth for man to corrupt it. He's going to clean off this earth by the fire baptism. Amen. And this morning I can say we are attribute sons of his spirit. Not yet entered into the word form body. Amen. We became from the attribute to the flesh to be tempted. From the flesh man we are going back to the word. Amen. So we are not going to be here always. We are on our way somewhere. We are on the way to the resurrection. We are on the way to the third pool manifestation. We are on the way to speak the word. Doesn't matter if your family is lost. One of these days you will stand and speak the word. You will say repent in the name of Jesus Christ. And you will run to the altar and they will repent. And the devil can do nothing about it. Because God said it. Amen. And I believe it. And it's going to happen. Amen. You know, I, you will love this message, Brother Sam. There's nothing upon the face of the earth that can compare to that. The people can look at their bank account and say, I've got so much. That is nothing but we got Jesus. We have Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus, man. You can go back and study history and go from the beginning of time and you can check men that have walked upon the face of the earth. They were great men. They were mighty men. Amen. One minister says, you know, when there's great men standing or sitting in a, in a hall and a great, uh, maybe Caesar walks in there, everybody will, will stand up and they will, they, will, they will acknowledge him. But when Jesus comes in, that is something different, brother. They will fall down and worship him. And I'm here to worship him. I'm here to praise him. That's Niemann's was Jesus. That's Niemann. I don't care who it is, man. There is no body like Jesus. He's the sweetest one of all. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. When your mother forsake you, your father forsake you, your friend forsake you, Jesus will still be there. Amen. Don't you appreciate Jesus this morning? To realize the King of Glory, He took off His robes, He took off His crown, He took the scepter and He went and He said, No, I'm going to save the Brother Brian. I'm going to save Brother David. I'm going to save Brother Thomas. I'm going to save Brother Poppy. Now can you imagine, can you, 
Can you give other men the honor and praise? No, sir. I will give the praise to Jesus. I will mention the name of Jesus. I will bless the name of Jesus. Amen. You, you know when we were cast off, man, the people hated us, they despised us, they didn't like us, but you know Jesus cared for us. Amen. He loves us. You know the Bible says in the book of John, when a man that was born blind, he raised up and Jesus came and he healed him. The disciples asked him, but tell me, this man, did his father sin or did he sin that is born blind? He said, no, that the power of God may be made manifest. And I'm so glad today that I'm here, that the power of God can be made manifest in my life. And we mustn't question why we are going through such horrible times. I wonder why this is happening to me. No, don't worry. Amen. I believe God is working on me. I'm a work in progress. I'm going to get there. I'm not what I want to be, but I'm going to be what God wants me to be. Amen. People feel so bad. They say, you know, I feel so... I, 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 I'm never going to make it. Don't worry. It's not you that's going to make it. It's a seed in you that's going to make it. God is going to call that seed out. We always worried about this is going to happen and nothing can happen. Amen. Uh, I, I believe that one time the pastor sent us a quote. You know, you are born and God sent his angels. Amen. To watch over you through your life's journey. So wherever you go, it doesn't matter where you are. I believe that the angels of God is with you. They watch over you. The Bible says the angel of God and tempers around them that fear God. Amen. 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 There's no one like Jesus. No one, no one like Jesus. Amen. How many human beings? Now you sit down and you consider and you look at your life and you see what type of person you are and you sit down and you wonder, but why did God save me? There were so many millions of people upon the face of the earth, but he chose me. There were so many people that was better than me, that was uh, more educated than me, but he chose me. And I can sing that song, he chose me. Out of so many people, he chose me. How many, sir, how many people were upon the face of the earth that day when he spoke to my heart and he turned my way and he pointed me to Calvary and here I stand this morning and I can sing the praises of Almighty God. So I can say this morning there's nobody like Jesus. There will never be anybody like Jesus. He's the one that stands alone. When we open the Bible, we read the Bible, we read about Jesus. We read about the salvation of God. We read about the healing power of God. We read about the mercy of God. But I was so bad, I killed somebody, it's nothing. I believe the grace of God is here upon the face of the earth. You're in the year 2018 to help you out of your condition. Amen. He's here to be a result of every situation. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't, I don't care what it is. Even if you sin this morning, it's nothing. I know you have representation by predestination. You are a child of God. You came out of the mind of God. You may be seated. You know that God don't use great men. He doesn't use mighty men. You know God used, amen, the rod of Moses. He uses small things. Like I spoke to Brother Luke Thompson one day, God uses dumb weapons to overcome the enemy. God used the rod of Moses. He used the locks of Samson. He used the slingshot of David. He used the barley cake of Gideon. He used the footsteps of the lepers. What about us? We got, we got more than that, man. We have a mighty God on our side. If God be for us, who can be against us? There is no principality, no power. There's nothing that can harm us. There's no demon that can destroy us. No, we are here upon the face of the earth to serve the living God and to fulfill the word of God in this day. Jesus. 
Do you think that God turned you all these years in a message for you to die now? Then it defeats his object. He raised you up and he brought you in a message and he taught you the word. Amen. He pulled you out of the world, out of your condition. Then the devil can tell you you are going to die tomorrow. How can you die when God trains you for a job? You still got a job to do. I don't care if it's a small job. Amen. To testify to one person. No. The devil can do you no harm. And I'm going to stay right under the blood. And it is not a man's blood. It is not a Jewish blood. It is not a Gentile blood. But it's the blood of Elohim. It's a special created blood. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. You know David of the Bible. He was a shepherd. But David, you know, being like one minister said, he was, uh, he was, he had no qualifications. He did not qualify. But you know, David had a small little scrub bag. And he had it on his side. It's like, uh, like we would say it's a wallet, but it was hanging down his side like that. And uh, he was looking after the sheep. And when the sheep got sick, he came and he took that scrub bag and he opened that scrub bag. And in that scrub bag was honey. And in that scrub bag was a little a limestone. And he took the honey and he rubbed it on a limestone. And he came and he took the sheep and he put the sheep and he took him and he fed him the, the honey. And while that sheep was licking the honey, he was licking the limestone. And he became well. Now we have another rock. Yes. He's called Jesus Christ. And we take the honey and we're rubbing that honey on that rock. And we want you this morning, if you're not well in the body, you can start leaking. And you can start leaking. And you can start leaking. And you can start leaking. And, and while you're leaking, if there be any praise, if there be any virtue, it's in Jesus. So this morning, I'm here this morning to present you the rock, the Christ Jesus, and you start licking, and you're going to get well. Now, many years ago, there was called, there was a mad dog. I think it was, they called it a dog that has rabies. They called it a mad dog. And he put the people and they died. But they had another rock. And you know what they done? They took that person that was bitten by the, that dog. And they put that person against that rock. And when that rock, uh, when that, that person stuck to that rock, they loved. If they did not stick to that rock, they died. But I'm here to tell you, I know of another rock. And I know that uh, we can stick to that rock. When we are sick and we are dying, we are going to stick to that rock. And that rock is called Jesus. And I know we're going to get better. I don't care how sick we are. If we're spiritually sick, I don't care. But I know one thing that we are going to get better because we are sticking to the rock. We are holding to the rock. The songwriter says, lead me to that rock that is higher than I. Amen. I'm beginning to feel good. I don't feel sick anymore. I feel half my age. And I feel twice my size. The prophet said the worst mad dog I know of is the devil. That put many and the only cure I know is the rock of ages. There's many rocks that has passed away. There's many people that has passed away. But I can tell you this rock will never pass away. You know, when you, when you go to bed at night, you put the rock under your pillow. You are like Jacob, I will, so I will make this pillow my rock and I will sleep on it day and night. 
I will be like David. I will take the word of God. I will hide it in my heart that I may not sin against the rock. Amen. Amen. So you stick to that rock. Hold on. God will take care of every situation. Amen. Man that is born is of a few days and full of sorrow. We all sin. The Bible says we have all sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. There was one time a cockney. The prophet speaks about it. And you know what? This great king was going to the palace and he had a message to send to, to, to a certain place. And he didn't know who to send. And he seen a, a young man standing against the wall there. And he told him, listen, come here, I got this message. Yeah. Take this, this message, hurry to a certain place and command this to be done. He said, but take my scepter in your hand. That will vindicate you that you are sent from me, the king. The man came and he took the scepter and he stuck it under his robe. And he went and he started running. Yes. The guards everywhere stopped him. They wanted to know where he's going. He said, I have a message of the king. Amen. I am the king's message. Yes. And I want to tell you today, you are the messenger of the king. Yes. You have the word of God. Yes. You have Malachi 4 word message in this day. So you take this message to everybody. Yes. Take it to your neighbor and tell them that, that Jesus saves. Yes. You take this message of life to everybody. Yes. And God will vindicate the word. Amen. Tell the world that Jesus saves. Tell the world that the world that Jesus loves. Tell the world that he died for every human being upon the face of the earth. Stand in a cap for your family. He stood in a cap for us. Moses one time had a better idea than God had. When God came and he told him, Moses, take yourself out of the way. Let me destroy those people and I will make a nation out of you. And Moses threw himself in a bag, in a cap. The prophet says he always wondered how could Moses tell God something better or better plan. But he says, you know what? They come to find out it was not Moses. It was the spirit of Christ in Moses. So you are here this morning. You have the spirit of Christ in your heart that can aim and testify the word of God. And God will come behind that word and he will vindicate it. You throw yourself in the breach. Amen. The prophet said the Lord Jesus stood in a breach and he preached a cap. Someone who could put his hand on a sinner and on a holy God and stand in the breach. Yes. So God has got, got some cap standers in the year 2018 when the whole world is in a chaotic condition. You stand in that cap. You hold that token over your family. They got to come and accept Jesus Christ. They got to be saved. Amen. And we're not going to drift away. We're going to stay in line. We are going to stay in line. We are not breaking down for us. There's a lot of breaking down for us. A lot of breaking down for every one of us. But together we're going to make it. We're going to make it. We are going to make it. Amen. Amen. The prophet says one time, he looked at the picture out in Germany. He says, you look at this picture and you see it's a horrible looking picture. It looks like there's a storm coming on. Yes. But when you turn, when you go nearer, then you can look at the picture and you see it's angels wings touching together. Yes, Amen. Rejoicing the praises of God. So when you look at your problem, your situation that you are in, when you get nearer the, to it, you see, but you know that this is something that can help you along the way. God does not give us trials to make us bitter. Yes. He gives us trials to make us a better people. Yes, Amen. Amen. And we are the seed of Almighty God in the year 2018. You mean God has still got people upon the face of the earth yes. here in this year? I say yes. Amen. I believe that. The prophet said in Spurnian church age, we did not become seed by rebirth. We were seed and therefore Amen. reborn. For only the seed can be reborn because we were seed is the reason we could be quickened. In Nancy, there is nothing to quicken. Amen. In Nancy, there's, you, 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 you speak to people, you speak to them about the word, there's nothing. They can't respond. You know what? Because there's no seed in their hearts. 
But there is another people upon the face of the earth that God seed in their hearts. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The prophet says, in the greatest battle, he says we are made body, soul, and spirit. Or he says, shell, pulp, and the inside is a germ of life. Yes. Now he says you must draw three circles. The outside is, a, is a, the shell. The inside is a pulp. And right on the inside is a seed. And that is a seed that comes from God. And the outside body is controlled by five senses. See, taste, feel, smell, and hear. He said the inside of that body is a soul. And that soul is controlled by imagination, conscience, memory, reasoning, and affection that controls the soul. Your neighbor is the same as you. Yes, sir. Your boss is the same as you. Yes. Your friend is the same as you. Yes. The person you meet by the shopping center is the same as you. They've got five senses that control the body and five senses that control the soul. Yes, sir. But hold on. A natural man is born with these senses. They are nature-given senses. He can only think as a man. He can see as a man. He can understand as a man. He can hear as a man. Exactly. The prophet says, wait a bit. But when he becomes governed or regenerated, or we would call it born again, yes. then that sixth sense takes a hold of him. The sixth sense takes a hold of him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. That super sense raises him up into a spot yes. where he has faith to believe things that he could not hear, things that he could not understand. Amen. He believes it anyhow. Yes. Now, how can you explain to a believer that's got the sixth sense? Amen. There is no God. We know that there is a God. We know there are angels. We know that there is a saving grace of Almighty God upon the face of the earth. But a human being that does not have the sixth sense, he doesn't understand that. Amen. The, the sixth sense, the super sense, to take over all the other senses. Now I want to tell you, we're living in a time when we are bamboozled by the five senses of the body, the five senses of the soul. But I want to tell you one of these days, that sixth sense, that super sense is going to take over every avenue of your life. You'll be so Holy Spirit, sixth sense motivated. You'll see nothing like Jesus. He lived in a world of his own. You couldn't tell him anything. He was there. Even a prophet, he had that sixth sense. He could see things. He lived in another dimension. He lived in another spirit world. And God is going to lift up his people into another sphere that we can see all things. We we'll see the angel of God. We we'll see the manifestation of the word. We we'll see the healing power of God upon the face of the earth. The prophet says, he says here, it will control and it will rule, it will motivate. It does not have any reasoning at all. It does not deny anything contrary to the word. Amen. Any symptom that's contrary to the word, we will deny it. Only the born again, the regenerated, the governed will have that sense. And I can tell you this morning, we were born with that sense. Amen. And I can tell you now, you can walk by that sixth sense. You talk by that sixth sense. You love by that sixth sense. You die by that sixth sense. But it doesn't end there. You are well raised again by that sixth sense. Amen. Man, one time they came, the, the, when they, the disciples spoke to Jesus, they said, uh, these people have nothing to eat, but you send them away. He said, no, you feed them. They didn't know what they had to do. They said, but you've only got, uh, amen, two fish and five little loaves. That wasn't even not enough for the lunch for, 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 for that little boy. Man seen that. They seen that two fishes. And he's seen that five little loaves. But Jesus, he's seen the 5,000 being fed. Man seen the, the division among the believers. Brother Branham seen the perfect pride. Because it was in another dimension. We look and see the promise. 
and we know what we know. We are not cast apart, amen, by men's winds of doctrine. No, sir. We believe every word of God. Every promise in the book is ours. Every verse and every line. We believe every word that issued from the mouth of God. We believe the prophet's message. Man can say, yeah, but the prophet made mistakes. No, he did not make a mistake. He said something for a purpose and we believe it. Brother Plenum said it, we believe it. And that settles it and we're going to get out of here one of these days. Amen. Amen, Amen brother. We are not going to be here forever. We are not going to have problems here forever. We are going to get out of here one of these days. Amen. I'm so glad we're going to get out of here one day. We are tired of these bodies. We're tired of battling. We're tired of problems. But we are walking with the promise of Almighty God. Amen. That we are going to get out of here. Like you know when they took the bones of Joseph. When they felt down and out and depressed. They came to the bones of Joseph. They took the casket and they rattled the quotes. And every now and then we are rattling the quotes. We are going to get out of here. We are going to go to Jesus to go and stay with him. Amen. The musicians can come up. Read you this poem, the touch of the master's hand. Amen. He says here, it was battered and scarred, and the auctioneer thought it hardly worth his while to waste his time on the old violin. Mm. But he held it up with a smile. Yes, sir. What am I but good people? He cried. Who starts a bidding for me? Yay. One dollar, one dollar, do I hear two? Two dollars, who makes it three? Three dollars, three dollars twice, going for three. But no, from the room far back, a gray bearded man came forward and picked up the pole. Then, wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening up the strings, he played a melody pure and sweet, as sweet as an angel sings. The music ceased and the auctioneer, auctioneer with a voice that was quiet and low said, what now am I but for this old violin? He held it up aloft with his bow. Yes, one thousand, one thousand, do I hear two? Two thousand, two thousand, who makes it three? Three thousand, three thousand, going once, going twice. Amen, he sold it. The audience cheered. But some of them cried, yes, sir. we just don't understand what change it's worth. Yes, sir. Swift came the reply, the touch of the master's hand. <laughs> and many a man was life out of tune, all battered and bruised with hardship. Yes. It's auctioned cheap to a thoughtless crowd, much like that old violin. A mess of pottage, a glass of wine, yes. a game, and he travels on. He's going once, he's going twice, he's going and almost gone. But the master comes, yes. and a foolish crowd can never quite understand the worth of a soul, a change that is wrought by the touch of the master's hand. Amen. Amen. As we stand to our feet. Amen. Father, I was once like this man called when they put me on auction and they said I'm worthless, there's nothing good in me. Lord, I was going once, going twice, I was almost gone. But the touch of the master's hand came down and touched my life. And that's what they've done with this message, God. They put it on auction. They said this auction, this message is worthless, God. They said that this message of the hour is nothing. But God, we believe you are the one. Aim in the touch of the master's hand that can go through this message. And you can make this message come to life in the people's hearts, oh God. 
And this morning, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, God. Father, may the touch of the Master's hand come and stumble over our lives. And Lord, may you begin to thunder out in sweetness, in humility, in undefined lives, O oh God. We believe that there's a sinner in our midst this morning. Lord, this is a day of visitation. This is a day when the touch of the Master's hand can stumble over their lives and tell them, Come, my child, today is your day of visitation. Don't turn it down. Don't wait for another day. Today, Jesus Christ can strum because He is a master. He can strum over your heart. He can make you and bring you to life in this day and age. He can make you a blood-washed human being. Maybe you've done something yesterday, but today I can be a changed person. And this morning, Father, as we raise our hands, I believe that the great King of Kings is able to do that to me today, God. You are the one that can take your, amen, Father, the Master's hand and sum it over my life that I may become to reflect the, the Master's plan in this day and age, oh God. May you come and bless your people. May you come and touch every believer this morning, God. May you come and touch me as well, Father. May you come and touch from the eldest to the youngest. Uh. May you come and touch the visitors in our gates today, God. May you come and touch, God, amen, Father, the unsaved, God. Those that think they cannot make it, God. We believe, Lord, there is a fountain filled with blood that flows from Emmanuel's veins where sinners can plunge beneath that flow and come up white as snow, God. Today, Father, may the great hand of God come down. May you come and touch us like only you can touch, O oh God. Like only you can save, O oh God. Like only you can heal, God. Like only you can deliver, God. May today be our day of visitation, God. May we go out of here singing the praises of Almighty God. May today, God, may the great angel of life Amen. Come and quicken us according to thy divine will and plan. And may you raise us up under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, God. May you come and bless each and every soul today, God. Father, we know the great Holy Spirit is here. Lord, the Bible says no man can come except the Father draws him. And this morning we can feel that drawing power. There is a deep calling to the deep God. We know we can make it, God. We know we can serve God in this day when there's so much darkness around God. So may you bless each and every soul. Bless the musicians. Bless the pastor. Bless his family, God. Bless the visitors from Statine. Bless us here in Johannesburg, God. May the great Holy Spirit of Almighty God, Amen, flow out, God. May that great pillar of fire burst open this morning and seal everyone into the kingdom of God. That is our prayer this morning for your children, God. Thank you so much for saving us, God. Thank you so much for healing us. Thank you for being with us here this morning, God. Thank you for your mighty presence, God. We give you the praise. We give you the honor, God. In Jesus Christ, let me pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everything. Just you set my spirit free. Oh, there is no one, oh, no one like Jesus. 